this terracotta has details that we only get one chance to do it right. And it's gonna cost us more money, but we're doing it right and it's gonna last forever. I knew from day one we were gonna restore the product uh, to the best of our abilities. I mean, some of the product was gone. I mean, it was, it, there wasn't anything there, so you had to have new stuff made. Yet, we also did not want to make it look brand new. And I think that's when we looked at this terracotta and this project as a whole. We wanted to make sure we did the details and we did them right. This is the anchor to Mass Avenue on this side of Mass. Um, and that terracotta is, is kind of the, that, that's the real anchor to it because everyone in town identifies with it. There's not a lot of cities that have that, quite frankly. Uh, very, very few. Most have been, if they did, uh, they've been wrecked. Um, you, know, the, the, you know, especially in the Art Deco kind of era, you know, that, that, that window was very, very short. We knew all along we would never tear down these buildings. We knew it was going to be a difficult project, but the beauty of it was, as we found you know, in the city, in Indianapolis in particular, it was collaborative. I could see really quickly these people, this, these buildings were important to them. They want to make their city better, and you know, we, we want to be a part of that. Um, and it's, uh, it takes a lot of work, uh, but when it's collaborative, it's fun. Once we got to like Brody Campbell, who ultimately we selected, um, I was actually, it wasn't here, uh, I was with them at another building in the other side of town that they did, and I was with the guy, you know, literally, he was full of dust, because he came from a job site, and he was the guy doing the work. But when the guy who actually does it shows up, and he was talking to me specifically about little details that he had to do to get this terracotta to look right. And I'm like, okay, these, this is our guy, you know, this is who we want. It's a uh, big star. I mean, this should attract a lot of people. With terracotta, you've got, like on this project, you have big chunks out. Well, you use a certain product, a thick set. and. Then you have a thin set for smaller, quarter or less chunks. So we had to work with the thick set out to a point, and you let to have to, like a lift. Lift is where you put so much in, you gotta let set for a couple hours, then put another until you get it almost out, let that set for a day, and then put the thin set over it. There was a lot of time we'd take pieces out and they would come out in our hands. So then you carefully put them in these lifts, number them, and get them back out. So somebody, we had other guys that would help epoxy, and I'm talking drilling little holes to pin it and then put the epoxy, so, and then put it back in, then you have to let it set, and then sand it down so you don't see the epoxy line. At one point, we had 28 guys here patching, and we had to show them that a lot of them never worked with terracotta. And we have a big room inside during the winter where there'd be six, seven hundred pieces all numbered so we didn't mix them up. From the first stone, you gotta patch it, you gotta wait, sand it two days later, then you gotta wait and paint it, and then you gotta wait and glaze it, and then they gotta come back, tuck point it, and wash it. It was a long process. Every little thing that's wrong with this building had its own uh, detail on how to fix it. You have to look at that detail, figure out what, what goes where, what patch goes where, what material goes here, what, what do you have to do there to fix it. So it's really a time-consuming process. Some of these detailed pieces take four or five days a piece just to fix. Fix one piece. you got a whole process to it pull it out, get the, get the original shape, mold it back. You're almost like you're molding clay, but with a different material. When we initially got here, we had to take, uh, I believe it was close to 100 and some pieces out to go to have sent away for a mold. 
and to protect the other pieces around it was quite a chore in itself, you know, because we didn't want to create more damage than, than there already was. Um, and then once you took the piece out, then you really got the scope of how much work needed to be done because there was a lot of things behind the wall that you didn't see uh, until you actually took the pieces out. And you had to tape everything up, epoxy it, wrap it all up, send them away, and then wait for them to be shipped back. Virtually every single tile on there, with a piece of terracotta on here, has been fixed and patched and painted and sanded on this whole entire building. So you're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces that we've had to repair. It's, it's quite a bit of work. It's like a giant puzzle. And then I get to find the pieces and get them where they need to go. Like this side right here is all the north side, so we call it in. Starts from one to 16, and each set of windows, is that's your elevation. So when the crates came out here, they were, uh, we numbered the crates, like crate 29 or 28 or 27. And then I got into those pieces and then found like a N, an N3, one dash one or whatever you have, you know, and then I pull that out and put it on the elevation that it needs to go to. That way they don't have to worry about it. So when I, when I put it on the skid and send it out there to them, they know that the pieces that they need are right there. A lot of things that I never thought I would do, I'm doing. You can fix it and you can really manipulate it to make it look like, you know, like nothing happened. You really can make this look like, you know, like it did in the original 1930s, 40s. And I think that's the beauty of it, really. You know, I, I literally have run up and down these buildings every day fixing stuff. And I'm also fixing things that I did, you know, a month or two months ago that now I feel like I'm better. I have de developed more of a skill for it and an eye for it. And I really am fixing things that I thought were, you know, were good. And now I'm looking at it like, nope, that's where my pride comes in. And I really take pride in it because I want it to look good. You know, this work uh, that you see out there now, it's not good, it's amazing uh, how it's turned out. And, and without those guys, without Brody Campbell, we wouldn't have been able to do it. And, and, and I think they, they have pride. You know, that's what, I mean, these guys out there, they're working on it. I mean, I've met with the foreman multiple times, and they, you know, this is his building. You know, he, he takes it very seriously on it. And, and, and that's what's fun about it when you see the craftsmen that are out there, and they, you know, they're going to drive by this thing, their kids, their wives, whatever, and they're going to be like, yeah, I, I did that. And that, that's something they should be proud of. There's, Quite frankly, unfortunately, there's not that many guys that can do that anymore.